Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. We are at Lowe's picking up a polisher that is on the list that I have not reviewed yet, and that would be the Cobalt 24 volt polisher. If you do not have a battery for Cobalt tools, they're all interchangeable. You do have to get the kit that has the charger and two batteries, which is, I believe, 139 They also have $14 pads here, three pads. Uh, these are six inch pads because the polisher will come with a six inch backing plate. Here is the charger kit I will have to pick up because I do not have a cobalt tool. Now something interesting I noticed during checkout is if you buy the battery kit with the charger, the polisher comes free and that's not advertised. I didn't find it on a website. I didn't find it really anywhere until I went through and the cashier totaled up and it was only 173.82 total. So here you can see the discount is for the polisher itself. Interesting. I don't know how many of the Lowe's will do this, but there you go. Both batteries, and there are two sizes, a 4 and a 2 amp, and uh, one's uh, quite a bit lighter than the other. So if you want a lighter tool, you can attach the smaller battery. They come half-charged, and it doesn't take long, about 40 minutes or so, to get them fully charged. Let's open up the box, do an unboxing, and see what we get with the kit. Unsure if the polisher came with any pads at all, I bought a pack of three. And as fate has it, it does come with three pads, a finish, a polish, and a cutting foam pad. Also comes with an instruction manual and a bag with the open end wrench for the backing plate, uh, the bail handle, the side handle, the hex cap screws, Depending on if you're left or right handed, you could put the side handle on either side. I will not be using the side handle or the bail handle. I just like to grip the platypus shaped head of the polisher itself. And finally, the polisher itself. It is very light. The plastic does feel of low quality. One thing I do like that I see is a variable speed trigger, which means you can slowly squeeze the trigger and feather the way the polisher starts. The trigger also has a lock on button. Very nice. We point out the pros and cons on every tool and every product, and I'm sure this polisher will have plenty of both. I do not like the way the dial has no tactile feedback whatsoever. Numbers and dimensions on the polisher, important if you're trying to choose one for a certain type of job, uh, trying to fit it in spaces, or just the overall weight when it comes to the time and the length of use with the polisher. Let's get the smaller battery in there and take some measurements. It is a little bit shorter with the smaller battery than most of the other polishers. It's a little bit uh, narrower and uh, a little bit of a lower profile. It is indeed lighter than a lot of polishers out there, almost by a full pound. Let's get some numbers behind sound and vibration and you can compare them with older videos. Initial thoughts on sound and vibration. It's not any louder than any polisher out there. It's a little bit smoother, and that has to do with the shorter throw. It's an 8mm throw polisher. If you keep the backing plate and the pads that they intend you to use, it will run rather smooth. 
Now for the look inside section of the video where we tear the unit down and take a look at its inner works. And as I point out and tear the unit down, we can go over something very important. Looking at a polisher by itself or pads by themselves or uh, correction fluids by themselves, we're only looking at one link in the chain. They work as a team and the manufacturers, they intend them to be worked as a team and balance them to, to work as a team. So. If you have a polisher that comes with that backing plate, the counterbalance is weighted for the backing plate it comes with and also pads that they sell with it. If you change them out, which you most certainly can, and it's a good thing to experiment, you may throw off the way the polisher performs. There may be different sounds and vibrations and feelings and performance um, and results if you change things up. I just want you to keep that in mind. I want you to see this though. We don't have to worry about bad grease being in there because there hardly is any, maybe a quarter of an ounce at most. We will be packing this. And another great alternative to the Wolf Heads Red, which I love, is the Schaefer's. Uh, this is a high temp waterproof grease and works fantastically. Most of the screws holding this together are T15s. We do have four Phillips head screws here that holds the casing for the gears and the pinion gear uh, to separate that. And then we can finally get to the motor. This is a tiny brushless motor, 2300 to 3800 OPM. So it will not have a high revving pitching sound and will not have a ton of power and may not need any depending uh, on the type of work you will be doing. We do have six T15s on the side here. We need to remove those and finally get to that motor. Some things I like. The motherboard here is protected with an epoxy standard 8 amp switch. All of the connections are nice and clean. We do have a, a, a protectant and epoxy over the connections as well. Something good to see. Uh, the, the speed dial is something I would change out. The field windings here, they're not coated. I'd like to see that. We do have clean laminations, uh, a nice compact motor here. Again, the field windings on this side aren't coated. The fan, I would like to see directional. You get more airspeed and movement for cooling. Uh, I do like to see, however, the nice sealed bearings. I believe they're Japanese. The, the way it's put together, guys, it's a mixed bag of low-quality and high-quality items, but the, the build itself is not bad. It's gonna, it's guys. I really don't know if this thing is going to hold up. It does feel um, very thrown together, like they just uh, opened up a bag of pieces, parts, dumped them out, and threw this thing together. So let's get some grease in here. That's something we can do to help it run smoother and cooler. Get some quality grease in there. And we go over to a test panel to see how it performs. I'll show you what it is capable of. We're going to keep their backing plate. And we're going to keep their pads out. We're going to use our pads. We'll grab the pad that is more aggressive. And we'll use Papa Cut from Phoenix EOD. Team everything together and see what we can do on this test panel. These sand marks on the test panel, you may remember them. They are 2,500, 2,000, 1,500, 1,000, and 800 grit sand marks. We're going to go over all of them and see what we can remove with this polisher. I'll close my yap from here and you can listen to the machine and watch it do its thing.
polisher does run smooth with the intended backing plate and pads that come with it, very important. Uh, the sound isn't any louder than any other polisher. It doesn't have a ton of power, it's not going to. Uh, but as you can see here, it is capable of enhancements and maybe even one step. Multi-step corrections, deep cutting, uh, no, I would use something else. This would really slow you down. But it can get some work done, it can make you money. Uh, the 173 and change that I paid for it, you would earn back rather quickly. Just some information for you to um, think about, and I'll put a link down below, or you can go to Lowe's and look into it further.